So, in the last video, we made game passes for our tycoon, and game passes are a good way to monetize your games and make money in Roblox. But there's another way, known as dev, dev products, which you can see here, they look like this. And they're products that you can buy repeatedly, unlike a game pass where you can only buy it once. So, in this video, I'll show you how to make that. Make sure to watch the last video if you haven't, because that's closely related to this one. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So our nice money multiplier game pass is done. Let's go make a dev product. So the difference between a game pass and dev product is that dev products cannot or can be bought again and again. Game passes can only be bought once. So let's first create our dev product. So you can actually do this in Roblox Studio by going to game settings, monetization, and scrolling down to developer products down here, create, and I'm going to Oh, that was a weird visual glitch. So I'm going to rename this product to more money. And I'll make the cost like five. And so what this will do is it will give the player more money. Like probably like a thousand coins or something. I don't know why it created another developer product. It doesn't really matter. I can just leave it there. It won't do anything. So now I need to copy the ID to clipboard, and you can just go to the three dots and do copy ID to clipboard, which is really nice. And since I have this UI list layout set up in my uh, frame of my starter GUI, all I have to do is duplicate this button using Control D, and you can see it pops down, and they have nice spacing with respect to one another. This is a really nice system to make reusable UI. I'm going to rename this duplicated button to the money button. Scroll down to the game pass ID. I'm going to first of all replace the value with our copied value. So that's the dev product ID. I'm going to go to the cog, click rename, and rename this to dev product ID. And then I'm going to also change the text while I'm at it. I'll say more money. And then along in parallel with our game pass button, we can add a new tag and call it dev product button. Big surprise. <laughs> and then we're going to check it, make sure it's checked. And then also make sure it's unchecked for game pass button because we don't want our dev product mo more money button to be both a game pass and a dev, dev product button. That would be kind of bad. And so implementing the code in the client monetization script is very, very similar. So actually, I can literally just copy this function and then change it to config dev product and then change the game pass ID to dev product ID and then change prompt game pass person purchase to prompt product purchase. There we go. So I mean really it's kind of bad to copy and paste code but in this case since the function is different it's good to differentiate between them even though a lot of the functionality is basically the same. So again I can just copy this block right here paste it down here, but instead of going through all the game pass buttons, we can go through the dev product button. And then we need to, instead of configuring the game pass, config dev product. We can copy the instance added signal as well. Change game pass button to dev product button. Change config game pass to config dev product, making sure there's no parentheses to call the function at the end. Okay, so let's try it out. Let's make sure it prompts us for a, a purchase. So I'm going to click more money. And it says, would you like to buy more money? Cool. And keep in mind, when you're doing test purchases in Studio, it won't actually charge your account. It won't take away Robux, which is really good. Kind of bad if you had to pay to test your thing. But yeah. And the server-side implementation of our dev products are actually a little more straightforward than the Game Pass. So in server script service, I'm going to create a new normal script, not a module script. And I'm going to call this product handler. Now, usually I would say it's kind of a bad idea to create another normal script running in parallel with your server, like your main server script. But this dev product system is so isolated from the rest of my code that it doesn't really matter and honestly making it a module script is just 
overcomplicating things. Like, it's always good to have nice patterns in your code, but not at the price of overcomplication. Make it as simple as possible, and then when you need to change it, you just have to upgrade it to a module if you need it down the long run. But I don't need it, so I'm going to leave it like this. So I'm going to first define a list, and I'm going to say local products equals a blank a blank table. And in the same fashion as we did game passes, I'm going to... Oh, oh I need to get the game pass idea again. I'm going to go copy it from the money button, actually. Or the dev product idea, I should say. Put it in the brackets. Copy your dev product idea, put it in the brackets, and we want to make another function. And this function is going to take a player once again. And in this function, all we want to do is just increase the player's money. Now, we could go into the leader stats and change it that way, but notice in past videos, we've actually made a function to set the player money. Literally called player manager set money. So, I'm going to go require the player manager by saying local player manager equals require script dot parent dot player manager. So now all I can all I can do is do player manager set money to whatever the player to the player, and then we're gonna do player manager dot get money plus a thousand. So you can change this a thousand to whatever you want. So right now what this will do is it'll set the player's money to their current money, but plus another thousand money. So the player can buy this as many times as I want, and each time they'll get a thousand. And then this is for later down the line when we actually implement the system. We need to return true to let the server know, to let our other functions know that this purchase was actually successful. Because you definitely don't want to use, like scam your players when they buy a dev product and something errors and it doesn't work. You just want to make sure it doesn't like charge them. And you could do that in a way that I'll show you in just a second. So now I'm going to go define the marketplace service because we'll need that. And we'll do we'll set this equal to game get service marketplace service. There we go. And then I'll also need the player service. I'm going to do local players equals game get service players. So now at the very bottom below our products, I'm going to say marketplace service dot process receipt equals function. And then this will take in a receipt info, which I'm just going to call info. And there we go. So what process receipt is, is it's a value in the marketplace service that expects a callback, a callback being this function that's called whenever the player buys something. And when the player buys something, it'll give us a little packet of info that has some information like the product ID, the player ID, and like other useful stuff like that. You can look more about this on the dev hub. I think it's just called receipt info. And so now we first need to do a bunch of checks to make sure the purchase can actually be validated and it'll actually work properly. So I'm going to say local player equals players get player by user ID. I'm going to do info dot player ID because our receipt info gives us the player who bought whatever. And then I'm going to say if not player. So if the player like left the game or they disconnected or their game crashed, we're not really sure if the purchase will go through because we can't really set the money when the player is not there. So we want to return an enum dot product purchase decision dot not processed yet. So what this does is it like notifies the buyer of the dev product or I guess Roblox that the transaction has not actually completed and therefore they shouldn't really be charged. I'm not really sure how it works under the hood but that's a general idea. And then or it'll like come back later and call this process receipt function again until it actually grants the purchase. And so that even if it have like a game breaking bug, it'll eventually fix itself when you fix it and it'll just call the process receipt again and again. So now below that I'm gonna say local success result equals p call products bracket, then info dot product ID and then comma player. So pcall calls a function and catches the error if an error occurs. 
because we don't want our functions up here to error and then the entire thing break and the Roblox doesn't really know like what happened with the purchase. We don't want to scam our players. And then we're just sending in a function and our function in this case is the one that corresponds to the product ID that we have set in our in, in our product ID that like the player bought up here in our product table. And then this other like comma player is just sending in a parameter of the player. So if there's if there's not a success, if we return false up here, so if not success or not result. So if there's not a good result, like if nothing gets returned or if something like breaks, then we want to we can just warn error for product, and we can just do the result. Which, in, in the case of an error, is just a error message. And then we also want to return enum.productPurchaseDecision.NotProcessed yet because something went wrong. We don't want the purchase to be granted because it wasn't actually granted. The player didn't get their money. But... At the very end of a function, if everything goes through and nothing returns, all we want to do is return enum dot product purchase decision dot purchase granted. So this means everything got through, the player got their money, everybody's happy. So let's hit play and try it out. So I'm gonna hit more money. Wait for this to go and click it, and then you can see in the top right it says your purchase has succeeded, and we have a thousand money. So there you have it. And that's about it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed learning about dev products and game passes as in the last video. Make sure to put any more suggestions for Tycoon videos in the comments. Put any questions down below too. But this series is fun to keep on improving over time. So I'll be glad to make more videos in the future. So, like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more Roblox scripting content in the form of Tycoon series and other series, and with that, I hope you have a nice day, and goodbye.